everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of The Wiley Show. And I want to say thank you to the new subscribers. Welcome. Welcome to the returning subscribers. And welcome to the family that's in the bushes. You know, you always have to give a shout out to the to the ones that's in the bushes. So we want to give a special shout out to those that are in the bushes. They are doing incredible, incredible things <clears throat> in the bushes. So we definitely want to thank them. Uh, we are back with another video. We had a lot that we discussed on last night, and we greatly appreciate the 8.000 uh, people that tuned in and watched The Wiley Show. Also, we want to give a special shout out for the 14,000 uh, plus viewers that watch Corey Hardrick, uh, neighbor, uh, give her rec recant of Corey Hardrick. So we greatly want to appreciate the 14,000 plus, and it's still growing. So we greatly appreciate it. We have a full show. Let's get into these topics. Okay. Um, is my living in vain? Mm -hmm. Is my praying? No. Okay, shout out to the Clark sisters. I saw this picture on social media, and I definitely want to give them their props. I love the Clark sisters. I think they are incredible, incredible women. I love them, and I love them well. And I love their uh, what they contributed to the Grammys. I love them. I love the movie. But what do they got on? Now, this is supposed to be Dorinda's um, line, it looked like the Clarks was in somebody's house painting, and somebody and they went to go play paintball gun, and they just got paint all over the dress. Who in the world told them to put on this dress? Who told them to do that? Who told them that that looked good? That's an embarrassment. Why are they smiling like we look good? No, that's not the appropriate look. I don't, I don't understand that. Dorinda, you should be ashamed of yourself to put it out for that. Y'all look like y'all was baptized in different coats of paint. Y'all look like y'all was baptized in yellow paint, blue paint, pink paint. What do y'all have on? So I saw it on social media and I was trigger and i merely said they got to be on the docket now i don't want to roast them so much because i don't want to be blocked because i have a tendency of getting blocked i may get a cease and desist i may get a lawsuit but it looked like they was baptized in pain now i love them vocally vocally they got it they can really beat destiny child in a in a versus battle but i'm just not with this look now, y'all need a stylist, Carson. Don't, don't start dressing weird now. Because that's a weird look right then and there. I don't want y'all to block me at all. Okay? We're going <laughs> to... So when I saw that picture, I immediately had to get involved. Okay, now let's get into politics really quickly. Reverend Warnock, Re Re Reverend Warnock and Herschel Walker is definitely heating up in uh, Georgia right now. I did tune in a little bit of the debate and they were talking about a couple of great things in the debate, but one particular thing in this debate that I couldn't believe that Herschel Walker decided to pull out a police badge. Now Herschel Walker has been going all around the town line said he was a police officer. And so he pulled out a fake badge and so Georgia, get it together. If you all let Herschel Walker win, y'all might as well go and leave America because Herschel Walker is one of the dumbest men I ever met. He don't have a clue, an inkling about anything about politics. So when I tune in, I said, what in the world? Why would you do that? And then Herschel Walker, when he pulled out the badge, you literally had the, the moderator said, you know, uh, don't bring out a, a, a prop. Put that prop away. And I'm like, come on now, Georgia. 
it should not be that this race is neck and neck. But one of the dumbest men I ever met or ever known is her uh, is Herschel Walker. Like Georgia, get it together. If you in Georgia, say hey, I would love for y'all to go out and vote. And I know the MAGA supporters, they want that seat because they understand power. Black folks, y'all better go out and vote. And Georgia, Texas voters, you better go out and vote. Stacey Abrams running in, in Georgia. So y'all better go. If you ain't registered, something wrong. So we wish them well. So I tune in a little bit of that debate, and I just have to bring uh them up. Um G Hobo, hope I'm saying his name, uh, my Chicago brother. Uh, he was performing, I think, Clark Atlanta um university homecoming, and he got pop, 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 pop at on stage. And when I was like, what really went on? So y'all know how things go on in this social media uh when you are a rapper or when it goes on out there. Like, it's just a target on these rappers back. And I love me some G Hobo. I think that he is an amazing rapper. Um, I love his music. He's one of the top rappers out there. He can literally out rap Nicki Minaj, but I don't know any of his songs. So I can't say that I'm a fan. I, that was in the script. I was supposed to say I was a big fan of him. I don't know any of that man record. I don't. So, uh, but he looks good. Okay, he re he really he really really looks he he he's a good looking guy, but I don't know any of his records, so I don't know if he can out rap Nicki or if he can out rap Cardi. I don't know any of his records, but shout out to G Hobo, all right. So he was shout out, and I'm glad that G Hobo is safe. Okay, I'm glad that he's protected. He had his arms around. I'm glad that he's safe. Now it could be one of his baby mama. I heard a Leslie one of the baby mamas shot at him. I don't know. But we are definitely uh, going to keep him in our prayers. We're going to wrap him around in prayers. And we're going to protect him and everything like that. And G Hobo, if you need me to be your security, let me look at the camera. Put the camera on me. If you need me to be your security, I'm here. All right. If you need me to protect you to be your bodyguard, I'm here. I would love to. I am six foot two. 300 pounds and everything and i can see out of my cock eye to out of my provisional vision i got an eye and i can see around the corner and everything like that i'm a very strong man you know what i'm saying and i can definitely protect you and i would love to so if you want to hire me uh g hubble i am here i'm going to definitely hit you up let me let me send your voice note give me a second let me send you a voice note. Hold on one second. Let me send you a voice note. Okay. Let me see your voice note. If you are here. My provision, provisional vision. Do I have a, can I send him a voice note? Is this him? What's up, G Hobo? This is Wiley from the Wiley Show. I seen and I that you got shot at, and I'm here to protect you, brother. I am here. I charge three hundred dollars an hour to be a guard. If you want me to be armed, I charge three thousand dollars an hour, and I can just watch you twenty four seven. When you go to some of your baby mama's house, when you go inside your mansion, I can be there to protect you. So if you want me to protect you from the Wiley Protector Services, I would love to do so. All right, brother, if you get this message, make sure you give me a call back. Holla. Okay, I just sent I just I just sent him a voice note. Yes, I did. I just sent him a voice note. Now, hopefully, I don't get blocked because you know what I'm saying? These celebrities, they they do block over here at the Wally Show. So I hopefully, you know, they do be blocking the Wally Show. So I hope I don't get blocked. Okay, the bull dagger. I mean Brittany Grinder. Um is definitely uh in the uh russia uh prison i'm hearing that she is in a small cell um that she's not being treated correctly and we are definitely are you know i, I feel kind of sorry for because at first i'm like she had a, a little bit of 
you know, um, juice, uh, marijuana, a little, a little vaporation of marijuana. Uh, so as that her friends call her BG, uh, she are definitely, uh, in our prayers, she can't munch on her baby's yoni because she is of uh, same gender 11. And so she's definitely in Russia missing her yoni and missing her people. So we are definitely are going to uh, keep her in prayers and hopefully she can get back home safe. And we are definitely uh, going to uh, send her a letter to the president to make sure she can be release out of prison because she is a good car carpet muncher. She is a good celebrity. And I hope that she come back. And I didn't know that she was in Russia playing basketball and that she paid, paid taxes really, really good in, in Russia. And they, you know, arrested her because she uh, broke the law. So we hopefully that Brittany can get it together and we hopefully all, you know, that, you know, she can come on back so she can munch on her woman. And put on her vibrator because you know that's what they do. They, they the women on women they put vibrators on, and that's why I don't understand people that are same gender level women. You put on a vibrator. Why not do the real thing? Because that's one thing I got is the real thing. Ain't nothing like the baby. Ain't ain't nothing like the real thing. So I don't have to connect it and get it off the charger and put it on me. I'm ready right now. See, Brittany. She got to go to the store. You know what I'm saying? And have to charge it up and put it and wrap it around her. I don't have to do that. Okay. So I'm just, I, 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 I'm just being, uh, she may get to go longer because she got that equipment that sound like. <laughs> you know she got that so you know me i have the natural thing you know what i'm saying she got turbo turbo you know that's what she has so we definitely are you know definitely are going to hopefully that she gets out of prison definitely and so when i saw the story i immediately said i have to come on and do a video and definitely talk about it and and we'll definitely do it. So I'm not going to send her voice though cuz I don't want her wife, you know, blocking me. I did get in the, in 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 the DM and I said, "You don't have to be alone, baby. I'm here for you." And so I put that in the DM and so her wife have not responded uh to that DM. And I put it in there, especially when I got my hair cut. I said, "Baby, you don't have to be alone. I'm here. I'm not in prison. Neither is my meat." is not in prison as well okay so we wish uh her all the best and the support <laughs> i don't understand why they get mad at me okay don't get mad at me all right let's talk about megan a stallion uh we definitely want to say something terrible happened to megan a stallion while she was away on concert dodging bullets she got um you know her house was ramshacked and stolen over five hundred thousand dollars worth of um items were stolen from her house so we are definitely are going to keep her in our prayers and like i said you know when these celebrities go out of town they don't really have the best security at their house and that her house was ramshacked now apparently people are saying wiley you know a lot of these celebrities when they get close to the holidays they allow people to break into their home so they can get a big insurance check and i don't necessarily believe that's true because this is not like you know somebody is a struggle rapper like akbar this is somebody that's you know what i'm saying you know that make good money you know she makes awesome money she tour around the country she makes great money so i don't necessarily understand why people think that this is definitely are going to um you know was an insurance scam and i know personally why don't you have security guards? And this is why I don't understand. I want to say this. Share this live and thumbs up this live really quickly. I don't understand why you ain't got security. Let me leave Megan Estario voice note because I just don't understand this. I just don't understand this. Let me leave her voice note. 
I really don't understand this. Is it still up here? Where's she at? Because I, I want to leave her a voice note. I left for a lot of voice notes. What's up, Megan? This is Wally from The Wally Show yet again. I think that you need to hire security because there's nowhere in the world that you should be allowed to, you know, not to have security. I do believe 1501. I do believe Erica Banks. I do believe Carl, Carl Crawford has something to do with your house being broken into. But if you want to hire the Wiley Protective Services, I definitely can do that uh, to protect your house. I could definitely do it uh, because if I was your security, you would have never got popped in your pinky toe by, uh, 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 by a little person. So if you want to be safe, you can hire Wiley Protective Services. I'm here for you. I charge $4,500 for an hour, and I would love to protect you. Peace. So I left her, I definitely left her uh, a voice note. And so we will see if she's going to respond to the voice note. Now, I personally want to say this because a lot of people don't understand that security is important, that all people does, that's robbers and thieves, they watch and see when you're going out of town, when you are away, and they are saying, hey, we, you know, we're going to ransack her house because we know when she's out of town. And so that's what they do. So you got to be careful. And it's kind of difficult because when she go to concerts, she have thousands of thousands of fans that are shouting her name and, and, and all this. So you know where they're going. So uh, we are definitely are going to keep her in our prayers. Okay, yes. I don't know if this is his name, Deshaun Watson. Is this Deshaun Watson on the screen? As mind you, I did not put this stuff together. Somebody else upload the pictures. Is this Deshaun Watson on the screen? Because he's yet back in the news. Okay, this Deshaun Watson. Uh, Deshaun Watson is back in the news. And give me a second. I want to read it to you all. He's he's back in the news for something else. Okay, Deshaun Watson facing a new lawsuit stemming from a 2020 massage. They're saying that um, another woman has filed a civil lawsuit against Deshaun Watson, alleging that the suspended Cleveland Browns quarterback uh, pressure her into oral doing a massage session in 2020. And in the is it is the 26th known lawsuit filed against Watson accusing him of inappropriate sexual misconduct or sexual assault during massage. In the lawsuit filed Thursday in Harris County, Texas, Watson is accused of soliciting the plaintiff over Instagram with a direct message for a massage of a historian. His, um, um, hotel room in Texas in December 2020 while he was a member of the of the Texas. The lawsuit state that during the session, Watson com continuously pressured the plaintiff um, into massaging his private area before he removed his towel and offered to let her get on top. According to the lawsuit, the plaintiff refused to have sex with Watson. However, he was able to pressure her into oral sex, and Watson paid the plaintiff three hundred dollars for her services, although. Um, her normal charge was, was $115 for an hour massage. According to the lawsuit, the plaintiff has suffered from severe depression, anxiety since the alleged incident. My client experience with Deshaun Watson follows a series of disturbingly similar encounters reported by more than 20 women who have filed a suit against the NFL superstar. The woman lawyer, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, I'm not even going to try, told CNN, it's a quote, Quote, like so many others, my client spent nearly two years struggling to cope with the shame and trauma for all he has stolen from her and the daily pain that has become her reality. Quote, knowing her story will bring on the hard conversation, criticism, even the victim blaming. The strength, the bravery of these women gave my client the courage to stand up and speak out. She seek justice not only for herself in her own healing, but for more than 20 women who refuse to be shamed into silence. The victims who have yet to come forward, Watson attorney Rusty Hardin told ESPN John Barr on Friday that he's going to refrain from commenting on the latest lawsuit until he learns the identity of the plaintiff 
in every other civil case filed against Watson, the court has ordered a plaintiff to be identified by name. Watson settled 23 of the lawsuit against him the past summer, but one remained outstanding, according to the plaintiff attorney, Tony Busby, who also represented the other woman who had sued. One lawsuit was dropped after the judge ruled that the plaintiff needed to amend their petition to disclose their name. Two other women filed criminal complaints against Watson, but did not sue him. All right. So we are definitely uh, going to keep you all updated about this Deshaun Watson situation. I don't understand. He's a, an attractive guy. You don't have to take anything from a woman in my gut. I feel that he's guilty. And if he was in my courtroom, I would sentence him to 414 years of hard labor if he was in my courtroom. But of course, I'm not a judge in a court of law. I am in a judge of the court of public opinion, the court of public defense opinion. I believe Deshaun Watson is guilty, guilty, guilty. And I do believe he needs to be counseled. I do believe his, um, you know, you know, sponsors should be snatched. That's what I believe. So we are definitely are going to continue to keep up with this story. It is very sad, very unfortunate that this is going on because no woman, I repeat, no woman deserved to be attacked, abused, and giving a, you know, having a yoni snatch. No woman. You should ask. And if she say no, move on. All right. That is sick and pathetic for you to take anything from anybody. Okay. So that was going on. <clears throat> so uh, I want to talk about Faye Evans and Stevie J. Uh, we are definitely have them up on the docket because Faith Evans decided to, uh, you know, decide to uh, divorce, divorce from Stevie J back on weeks after the music producer's public apology. So what they're saying is Faye Evans was back in court moving her divorce from Stevie J for it only weeks after the music producer issued a public apology where he begged for forgiveness, Radar Online has learned. According to court documents obtained by Radar Online, 50, Faith 49 has turned over her financial records to Stevie 50, including a list of her assets and debts. Uh, the move is a necessary step before a divorce can be finalized. The development comes after fans believe the two have reconciled after each other after a rocky couple of months. On Mother's Day, Stevie posted a note on social media. He apologized to Faye. He said, I hurt you, disrespect you, humiliate you in front of the world. Uh, from this day forward, I promise to listen to your feelings and be more dedicated with your heart. He continued. Also promise to build you up even more and to communicate daily with you, respect you and love you until you as happy as you were when you got married. Stevie claimed he had learned my lesson and said he never wanted to live with faith, that wanted to live with faith. He said, God knows I'm a better man with you and I'm asking you to find in your heart to forgive me and allow me to rebuild trust it looked like the apology did London to ruin their relationship with faith back in court as radarline.com first stevie filed a divorce in november 2021 after following three years of marriage citing inco in in inconceivable differences and i want to say this it is definitely giving cocaine um and crystal meth um when you're dealing with these two crackheads you know faith and cvj allegedly are crackheads and you know, they she she sobered up and she said, "Hey, I want to divorce you. You're nothing." But as long as she's on the crack, as long as she's on the you know the coke, she will stay with him. But once she sober up and stop taking all the coke up her nose, now she want to get divorced. So we are definitely you know want Faith to get free from a crackhead because uh, his pain doesn't even work. But I want her to go to rehab, okay? Because you definitely need to be in rehab. See, when you're a crackhead and you get and you deal with the quote and all of that, make sure you go to rehab because the way that they were definitely arguing and going off, it was definitely giving me powder dust. That's what it was giving me. And I know a lot of people are here gonna get mad. The only person gonna get mad at me is the crackhead. All right. That's that's the that's the only that's the only one only you take offense to what I'm saying, that would be the crackhead. Everybody else, no. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sure. All right. What else are we going? Okay. Uh, Saucy Santana is in the news. Um, I was reading, I was scouting the internet and one of my producers said, you need to jump, you know, on this story. And I said, well, what's going on with Saucy Santana and Kodak Black? The Saucy screws, uh, you know, 
Kodak Black? And they was like, no. Uh, so let me make sure I pull up the story. Saucy Santana, excuse me, appears to accuse Kodak Black of stealing his song Walk. Um, Saucy Santana is seemingly accusing Kodak Black of stealing his song Walk. Last night, October 12th, on the Shade Room shared a side-by-side -side photos of the 2022 XSL freshman. Saucy Santana and Kodak Black wearing the same outfit. Asked their followers who were the look better. Y'all chimed in the comment section posting All Lives Matter along with your orange heart, shoulder, shrug, emojis. However, Saucy had a much different response. Uh, T.S. Bro uh, stole my song, the Material Girl rapper uh, commented. Saucy Santana appears to refer... Referencing his song Walk, which was released in June 2021, 20, last month Kodak Black released a song titled Spin. Both tracks utilized the word walk over and over in the chorus. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I know you talk, you talking all this shit, but let me see you walk, 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 walk. Saucy raps on his song. Kodak type beats produced track by some rhyming walking and sliding stepping and sipping standing on the bitches and standing on the business walk 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 so saucy feels that kodak black have stole his song so we are definitely um when i listen to the song it does not sound familiar and see that's probably the ping the toxic ping that saucy santana been taking up his butthole because the the songs do not sound the same because when I listen to the songs, they do not sound the same. So I think Saucy is upset that Kodak Black is getting more clout than him and all of that. And Saucy Santana, maybe you will get a billboard hit or get on the level of Kodak Black if you stop running behind Carisha, please. But so I'm definitely uh don't feel you, you. You was he didn't steal your song. You need to stop. Kodak Black is better than you. He's a better rapper than you. He's a better writer than you. So, okay, so get it together. So you be trying to rap like you're a female and you're a man. You are a man. You are a man. You are a man. All right? So that's what he was saying on the shade room. And, of course, the shade room was being shady on social media, and we definitely had to talk about it. Okay? <laughs> so Erica Banks, we got Erica Banks up here because last night she was tweeting, talking about can we all be at peace? So because this was – Regarding, if you all remember, we're talking about uh, Lotto and Nicki Minaj. And, of course, they have drove social media into frenzy because they both was battling out on social media. They both was just going at it with tweets over and over and over and everything like that. And <clears throat> Erica Banks, she decided to say, hey, y'all, let's have peace. And I'm like, Erica, you the same woman that is masculine and don't can't keep a man. You hush and be silent and get in the corner and learn how to fry some chicken. And may, instead of eating chicken, maybe you can keep a man. I'm just not understanding that at all. I'm just really not. So you wrote some tweets and then you deleted it. Like, girl, come on now. I told you, get into the frenzy, make a diss record towards Nicki Minaj. You didn't want to do that. And you saw my uh, my tweets and stuff like that. So I'm just telling you, you don't need to get involved. Let them girls fight. I want to see Lotto fight with Nicki. I want to see that. Because it is time because I got so sick of tired of, of Nicki Minaj and even Black T blog. You know, I think she blocked me last night on Twitter. I don't care. I'm going to always give my opinion. I don't care if you block me or not. I'm always going to give my opinion. Now, when it comes to this whole thing with Nicki Minaj and the Grammys, let me uh, let me see the Grammys. Grammy committee. Give me a second. Let me see if I can find. So this is a lot of the people that's a part of the Recording Academy. As you can see, let me let me zoom that. I want y'all to see. Give me a second. Because I want y'all to see how the Grammy committee thing is because Nikki is talking about the Grammys and she's getting upset and she was just roasting and gagging with, with Megan. And I'm trying to find the Grammy committee and stuff like that. Let me see. Grammy chief. That's the Grammy chief, uh, which he's not a black man. 
And so I was trying to find a picture of the Grammys, but a lot of times it's a secret committee. And so I want to definitely see here uh, really quickly inside the secret committees that quietly runs the Grammy Awards. The path to a Grammy has long been uh, even to the music, industry, but since former recording Academy CEO Deborah alleged rampant voter corruption, everybody been confused. Here's what insiders tell us about it. So, of course, you see an article on Rolling Stone. They lay out the whole vote, the process of the votes. And as you can see right here, let me uh, hold on. Wait, hold on. Give me a second. Cancel. Let you see here. She's getting upset and mad. Hold on. Where are we at? Uh, this is the part that I want y'all to see. Give me a second. Uh, thank you so very much for that super chat mouth open. Love you and support you and thank you. So if you see right here inside the Grammys right here, you see, give me a second, you guys. Let me do something real quick. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Okay. I had to blow my nose and I didn't even mute my mic. My bad. Okay, so you see right here, it says the rules are reviewed and updated. Entries are submitted across 84 categories. Screening committees, it goes, this This is the whole thing we have. And I don't know if y'all really can see it, but it is showing that, um, I'm going to read it to you out loud. Entries are submitted across uh, 84 categories. Then it goes to screening committees, organizing series into appropriate fields. And then it's like a hierarchy of it. You have the uh, the craft committee determined final nominations, and then it goes to the members vote and a final ballot. I was trying to research a lot of this on social media and trying to find the pictures of these people. Now, most pictures that I was finding is white folks. And as you can remember, the CEO of the, one of the chiefs officer in the Grammys were quitted because it was so unfair. So when I'm saying here, and I say this humbly, I don't believe that, you know, Nikki should be coming at Lotto and addressing Lotto because Lotto is not the problems. The problem, it is the white dominated Grammys and the white dominated members of the Recording Academy. It's not Lotto. Lotto is a small, small fry in this whole entire situation. Now, what could have happened is that she, you know, Lotto could have called Nikki and say, you know what, you know, my, I don't think this is right. She should have called privately and said, hey, let's have a press conference and let's go to Oprah Winfrey show. And then once we leave Oprah Winfrey show, let's go to the Wiley show and let Wiley understand because he has such a massive reach and he has such an, a massive audience and he's very funny. He could actually get us more pool and about this whole situation of unfair treatment about the Grammys. And so he can broadcast this to his international audience and people will love it because he will give a great interview about this whole entire situation because he did an amazing job, you know, interviewing Corey Hardrick neighbor. Of course, he would do an amazing job interviewing me, you, Nikki and Lotto. So it could definitely happen. But so no, you know, Nikki didn't do that. What Nikki side decided to do, she decided to go on Twitter and, and go on an entire rant. And I, I'm just not understanding that because she didn't she didn't know how to do it appropriately. I just don't understand that. Give me a second. Okay. So then Nikki was like, she go on Instagram page and she it started on Thursday when Nikki posted a live stream um, captured Dear Grammys. In a video, she revealed her frustration that her single Super Freaky Girl has been moved out of rap category to pop, pointing out the rapper Lotto, Big Energy had not. Now, what she should have disclosed in there with that head wrap that she had on her head, she should have said, you know what? Let me address the Grammy committee, the people with the power. Let me address the, the, the people with the power, not Lotto. You see that black and you see all of them, the, the different committees and all that. Let me address them. Let me have my barbs go against them and, 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 and let them have it. This is why I don't understand. Thank you so very much, Laser, for that uh, super chat. She didn't do that. She went after her counterpart and wish she should have used the counterpart part and said, hey, let's address the real people with the power. 
See, when I talk about, you know, these bloggers and I talk about the mistreatment and I talk about not getting invited to these parties, I always say it's because a lot of people was intimidated by me because I call out very powerful people and people was intimidated by my confidence. And so if Nikki would have called me, all you had to do was call me, Nikki. If Nikki Minaj would have called me, I would have schooled her on the proper etiquettes of how to get justice for people that have been mistreated, for people that have been robbed of an opportunity. But she did not call me. She could have picked up the phone and called Brother Wiley, and I would have told her, I said, sister, instead of dragging Lotto, let's drag these white executives of the Grammys. But she did not call me. And see, I was offended by that because I saw her on Twitter and she was just really going at it and really trying to dog out Lotto. But let's continue this. Hold on one second. Okay. Then um uh let's 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 read read this. And this was on BuzzFeed News, BuzzFeed.news. This is it. They said just a reminder, excuse me, Grammy nominations aren't announced till November. But Lotto, a 23-year-old rapper from Ohio, had her first mainstream hit with 2021 Big Energy, including Minaj thinks she in with she's in with a chance. On her Instagram live stream, Nicki Minaj said that she feels her songs and Lotto songs should be should be competing in the same genre based on their respective uh, production. Um, and that she felt that there was a larger industry moving against her. Right. But call out the names of the industry, Nikki. Let us know who is against you. Call them out by name. With that head wrap on. Then um, they say moving the goalposts. This is a quote from Nikki. They stay moving the goalposts when it comes to me. Who is they? This is why you got to stop doing all that cocaine, Nikki, because you generalize something. You said a whole lot of nothing. You say they. Somebody type in the chat, type in who is they. Type in the chat, who is they. Okay. She goes and said, Minaj and Asha, if you can't if you can't tell me by now, there is a um, concrete effort to give new artists things they don't deserve over artists who have been deserving for many years. Call these people by name. The criticism broke down into a public argument when Minaj later posted a text from Lotto on Twitter. I agree with you, however, because of where we left off, I don't think you need to bring my name and song up to prove your point. The now deleted screenshot read. Nicki Minaj added the comment, this Karen, which is disrespectful because Lada was black, has probably mentioned my name in over 100 interviews. But today, Scratch Off decides to be silent rather to speak up for black women. She called her biggest inspiration. That energy should have been towards the real Karen with the power. And name them by name. Let's continue to read. Lotto has said repeatedly in interviews that Minaj is her idol and someone has always looked up to and that she hopes to collaborate with her one day. After Minaj started targeting her on Thursday, let me tweet this to Lotto because y'all, my audience, y'all need to start tweeting this to Lotto. Let me tweet this to Lotto because I'm preaching right now. Share this live because let me sit, let me make sure I send I send this to Lotto. Let me make sure I tweet this to Lotto. If we have about five good strong producers, tweet this to Lotto. Give me a second while I tweet this to Lotto really quickly. I want to tag her on Twitter on this. Okay, all right. At the Menard Star talking to her on Thursday, Lotto began replying on Twitter. First of all, I text you because I don't want to do the internet ish with someone I looked up to. She said, I do agree, but the way you're going about it seems malicious. I agree with Lotto on that. The way Nikki went about this was ghetto, ratchet, low budget. It was very malicious. And I agree with her on that uh, point. And then Lotto wrote a tweet here 
and the tweet she had, I ignored countless subtweets since March, and instead of addressing you in a DM, you're asking why I didn't speak up in your defense. It's the same answer I gave you when you asked why I didn't congratulate you. You're literally older than my mom trying to be a bully. So you heard that 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 tweet. Then it goes back to more behind more past behind the scenes drama bubbled to the surface as Lotto began sharing how she felt mistreated by Minaj in the past. Then it said Lotto, whose given name is uh, a lot of uh, Alsa Michelle St uh, Stephens. I hope I said it right. Posted some of Minaj's past tweets in which Minaj told her fans to stop posting a dud on her timeline and several others uh, aimed at Lotto. With all this being said, this wasn't just about a Grammy category, Lotto 23 said. You literally told me I'm not flourishing. No one cares about my little song. LOL. Nicki Minaj, Lotto then posted a recording she made of the conversation. Okay. I've done nothing to you. Yeah, you are. That is clearly delusional. It's delusional to say that other girls are flourishing. And then she went on a, um the audio. She, you know, she was talking about that because Nicki Minaj was upset because Lotto pretty much said other girls are flourishing. And Nicki Minaj took offense to that. And the blogger, because you know, Armand Wiggins, he did not want to uh give the credit of the blog that Lotto was on. He was it was Jason Lee's show. It was Jason Lee because Jason Lee actually interviewed Lotto. And that's when she said the other women are flourishing and there's other women out here with Nicki Minaj. And Nicki Minaj took offense to that. It's definitely giving cult. Um, she also shared, uh, which is she, is Lotto also shared a screenshot DM conversation which she had confronted uh, Minaj uh, about the shade. I literally named, uh, I, I literally named, you as my dream collab multiple times multiple interviews like i told you i look up to you and you still never answer my question about where the random shade started to come from so if you go on lotto's twitter and you see uh the dms it goes like this and i read this last night i'm going to read it again uh nikki minaj uh, this is back in september 4th so lotto sent nikki minaj this What's up? I showed you nothing but the uh, utmost respect and junior love as a fan, someone who looked up to you. Hate that you allowing people to convince you otherwise. You know what I meant. Nicki Minaj said, hey, before I respond to this, what is exactly are you talking about? Nicki Minaj trying to play stupid so that I can give you a clear response. I'm seeing this for the first time right now, by the way. Um, you see this. You see a lot of responded and said most recent um, – the interview you DM uh, Holland Media on Twitter about in your tweets that follow. It's clear that they were about um, that, but I'm trying to figure out what happened, like what changed. I showed you too much genuine love. And then, of course, the message, and some of it is cut out, but I'm going to read it anyway. Uh, Nikki Minaj responded, you showed me too much genuine love for what? To get exempt from something? I could have said the same thing, but you or or big big front care no okay that was that and then um you show me too much getting love for what that example for something i can say the same thing but you or bigfoot i'm sorry care she was just in making a sign no it is clear it's about what you're taking you're talking in circles say what you said here's an example nikki when you said it's clear you were talking about me when i said and that's how you have real talk let's start at what you said i don't talk in circles i don't get question we see everything trust it's clear as day did you think i got to where i am by not peeping everything do you think i don't know every release schedule at every record label do you think i don't know how many things move up in the list as soon as i say i'm about to do something lol well if you like to actually talk let me know it would probably be better on the phone though because i don't like back and forth texting so many things can get Okay, so many things can get, give me a second, can get misconstrued. And I know people usually use tech to spice their group chats. There's actually a lot I think you should know, though. And then Lotto said this, yeah, I like to talk, too, because you bringing up other people and release dates that don't got nothing to do with me or what I'm talking about. Yes, Lotto, you tell the truth there. Who's talking in circles? I reference the tweets and my... And my confusion uh, where all this pressure is coming from, again, I've showed you nothing but love. 
I'm the one trying to have real talk, not indirect subtree. Straighten up. I've ignored so much in hopes it wasn't what I thought it was from someone I look up to. Then um, Lotto, she gave Nicki Minaj her number. So that was that. So then I'm, let me scroll down. It quickly dissolved in a flurry of accusations that brought up several past controversies. Lotto hit out a Minaj for her marriage to Kenneth Petty, who is a convicted sex offender, while Minaj accused Lotto of using ghostwriters. <laughs> Super, and then this is what Lotto wrote to um, Nikki. Super freaky grandma is married, related to fucking rapists. You ain't gonna bully me, bitch. My other turn rival. Now you hate it, Lotto wrote. Okay. I, uh, then Nikki and I said this. I never raped anyone. I inspired millions, and you're one of them, bozo. Minaj responded in a later deleted tweet. All of this unfolding, fans quickly began reacting in real time when many are criticizing Minaj. 40 for fighting with Lotto, who is 17 years younger. Been literally arguing with people half your age for a month. Straight now, give it the fuck, give it the fuck up, ma'am. Said one. Uh, one viewer said this: Nicki Minaj is actually doing this to young girls, exactly what she accused the Kim of doing to her in zero. And I mean, in 07 and 08, baby girl going out sad. I agree with you on that. Barbs quickly came to Minaj's defense as well. Nikki can defend herself, another tweeted. I get it, but I'm so sick of her getting bullied and gaslight, gaslit by the entire industry. Nobody ever coming to her defense. That shit is so weird to me. If you call her your sis, why you can't ever publicly defend her? Uh, and then a viewer said this, all because Nikki said Big Energy is a pop song that a lot of months ago started was a pop song. Others pointed out how confusing the entire situation I've gotten and it's escalated. All this to lose to Jack, to, to Jack Harlow, radio show host uh, Scotty Bean tweeted. Okay. Grammy uh, char characterization has long been a point of dissatisfaction among many artists who make music in predominantly black and, La and Latina genres. In 2017, Drake publicly criticized the awarding for high, a hot line bling as best rap song saying he felt it wasn't a rap song and should have competed in pop and so again when drake said that i didn't really see drake going on a press conference and doing a tour and reaching out to the people in the grammy sending letters and starting a protest he didn't do that but let's continue reading in 2020 uh diddy called out the, uh, the characterization issues at the pre-grammy gala saying to be honest Black music have never been respected by the Grammys. I didn't see Diddy going on a tour. I didn't see Diddy email the MWCP. I didn't see Diddy uh, uh, give a point of action. He just made a statement and kept it moving. Um, this argument between Minaj and Lotto is the latest in a series of arguments between Minaj and other women in rap. Many uh, figures, including City Girls, JT, Cardi B, Exilia Banks, as well as Minaj and Lotto, has been involved in social media attention for weeks, largely in a proxy battle between Nicki Minaj and other rappers over with what being a woman in rap will look like. Uh, many fans pointed out that the legacy of women rappers has often been fraught with fights and suspicions with opportunities uh, for solidarity being overshadowed by territorial marking. Now, this is what Lil' Kim said back in the day. Let's play this. Yes, yes, speak. Okay, so that was that, and that's what Lil Kim said back when they first was having a battle. I'm saying Lil Kim be, uh, became a related trending topic on Twitter with many resharing an old interview in which Kim said Minaj wanted to be the only female out there. Some pointed out that many of Lil Kim's feelings towards Minaj were the same as Lotto. Friendly reminder, as a viewer has said. Lil' Kim said all this would happen and people laughed and called her jealous and everything else. The 2023 Grammy nomination were officially announced on November 15th 
BuzzFeed News have reached out to Minaj and Lotto and Recording Academy for comment. And so, uh, uh, another tweet that we want to read here, and I want to echo this. You owe Look Kim the biggest apology ever because she warned everybody that is the truth. That is facts at all. Okay. Oh, y'all didn't hear. I'm sorry. Y'all didn't, didn't hear that. Oh, well, I was not. And thank y'all so very much. So what I played was um, Look Kim did an uh, interview with, with the Breakfast Club, and she pretty much said that Nicki Minaj have been dissing her for a while and everybody know it in the breakfast club. I'm like, no, no, she haven't. And now people are saying, hey, um, now y'all really can believe what, Nikki, what Lil' Kim was saying about Nicki back in the day is actually the truth. Okay, so that was that. And who I think is wrong in this, Nicki is wrong. Nicki not using her power to get, get up support. Nicki is just a trash person because she just believe in beating up you know, the female rappers instead of not beating up the people with the power and the one that's making the decision. Lotto is not making this decision. The white folks are. And if you, and she got to be willing to call them white, them white folks out. If she's not going to do that, it ain't going to work. So now we're going to go on, on to our last topic here. Uh, it was a comment because last night we had the one and only Storm Monroe was on the show and he came on the show and we were he was addressing um none other uh I asked him a question about Sean Davy Way, a viewer. I don't know if this viewer is here uh or not. If you're in the bushes, come on down if you're here. But it was a viewer. Give me a second, let me pull up what was said because it was a viewer. Give me a second. Because a viewer responded about this and i want to read this comment this is why it's important to read comments because we got a new segment we doing on our show that we're going to pick a comment and dissect a viewer's comment in a video so this comment came from the slim reaper they said this quote see y'all let storm on roll lie in your face about certain things but people take his word like his gospel the real reason why him sean davy way son sunny tv tiff west fell out was because of this situation. It all started when Sunny TV had the bikini bottom panel and a mom wiggins had appeared on his show and then and that and, and the and after his appearance her panel had filled out. In the midst of their fallout, Sunny TV took a lot of backlash from people based on how she handled herself on Jovi Beauty's channel the next day. When she gone when when she have gone alive again which is her, Sean David Wade, Tiff West. And Tiff West, they created a new panel called You Can't Sit With Us. On that panel, which took place around January of 2020, Sunny TV explained that she felt like Storm Monroe did not come out to defend her when, when she went through her controversy. On the same panel, she attacked Tasha K for sending her idea about giving Storm Monroe a dating show after he reached 50,000 subscribers. Tasha asked to come on her live in a chat to address the situation, but Sunny TV refused to let Tasha come on. So instead, Tasha K sent her a text message exchange between her and Storm, discussing her not showing, um, not knowing about Sunny TV dating show idea before Tasha K announced it. Also, in the text message exchange, both of them called Sunny TV messy as well, and she has a, a yeah, she was offended by it. So Sunny TV started to attack both of them on the live because of her hurt being assaulted by them. In the process, she made accusations that Storm Monroe being gay because Son David Way and Tiff West did not dispute the accusations on her live. In his mind, they co-signed it. He blocked all of them because of it. Both Tiff West and Sean David Way were shocked. He blocked them on Instagram because in Tiff West's case, she was his moderator at the time. And Sean felt like he didn't say anything about his sexuality. He just smiled uncomfortably because of the accusations Sunny TV made about him on that live. So afterwards, that's when Sonny, uh, that's what Sean Davy Way started beefing with Storm. But then a couple of months after that, he started beefing with Tasha K uh, as well, based on the behind the scenes conversation on Mom Wiggins, among other things. So bottom line is, if Storm going to tell his story, tell the truth instead of lying in our face and playing with our intelligence. That is what a viewer had said about the situation of the the fallout 
between Sean David Way and Storm Monroe because I, I kept asking what was the fallout. I kept asking what really happened. And so what we're going to do right now, I'm going to reach out to Sean David Way via Instagram because I don't know if I'm following him or not. Use I don't know if I am, but I know I did tag him on Instagram uh, or not, but I will send him a voice note. Here we go. Hey, Sean, this is Wally from The Wally Show. I want to know what actually happened between you and Storm because one of my producers said that you fell out with Storm Monroe is because Storm blocked you on social media, uh, on Instagram, after you were not defending him when Sunny TV were calling him gay. If you have a response, I'm live right now with 553 producers from around the world. So if you would like to give a statement, I would like to play it on the air right now thank you and i wish you nothing but success okay so uh we are definitely uh sent him a voice note we don't know if he's going to respond but we are definitely uh reached out to him for a comment and so now we are definitely are going to um we are we are we are definitely going to see how the situation is going to end between you know Storm Monroe and Sean Davy Way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the link because we've been here for an hour, and this is the time we're not doing any phone calls. We're not doing any phone calls. We're not doing any phone calls. We only doing Streamyard. We only doing Streamyard. We only doing Streamyard. We only doing Streamyard. All right. Make sure y'all thumbs up the video. Okay. All right. Make sure y'all thumbs up the video. If you got something to say about any of the topics that we talked about, this is the time for you to respond. So that was a viewer. And that's what the viewer has said in the comments. And so, hey, uh, I don't know all the details. That's what I asked Storm Monroe. The reason why y'all fell out, I wanted to know that. And um, and so a viewer responded. So I don't know if the, the viewer going to call in or not, but this is the time. Okay. All right. And so those are pretty much the topics that we had discussed. Oh, let me talk about Kanye West. So we ain't got no viewers here. Um, Kanye West really want Kim Kardashian to be by his side to help him mentally to get support because mentally he's not he's not doing the best. So he reached out to Kim Kardashian to help him. According to the uh, what's going on, Kim Kardashian have ignored him. And I'm saying this. I want to definitely say this to uh, the viewers uh, about Kanye West. He needs to talk to his doctor and take it serious. Like you really need to go to your doctor, get yourself together because that's definitely need to happen. All right. Um, you could de definitely be anonymous. So, so don't start. Don't start asking dumb questions because we do the stream you all the time. Uh, how you doing? Can you hear me? Hello? You there? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm okay. talking to you. You here? Okay. Hey, Wally. Okay. Yeah. I have a couple of things I want to say. The first thing that I want to say is um, about the Grammys. Nicki Minaj was 100% correct in what she was saying. Big Energy is no different from Super Freaky Girl. And they, the Grammys, has a history of, you know, doing this to her to keep her from getting a Grammy. Everybody knows that. And Nicki Minaj is not the only person that they did it to. Also, when Nicki Minaj made the reference, she didn't say Lotto name. She said the name of the song. She she referenced Big Energy as an example. And she also referenced um, Drake's song, Hotline Bling, as well. To me, to me, just looking on the outside, this shouldn't have sent Lotto into a um, a frenzy. There was an issue, you know, going on between Nikki and Lotto, and that's why it became an issue because the mere fact that Nikki would reference, you know, these songs are by the same producers, Dr. Luke, that shouldn't have been a problem. So it went deeper than that. So once that actually happened, and then Lotto responded, and they started going back and forth with each other, um, it was on a personal level. And to me, Lotto exposed herself because she showed who she really was by even arguing about this. 
you 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 texted her that you agreed with her about Super Freaky Girl and Big Energy both being the same type of record. But you said you didn't want to say that publicly, you know, which is a problem in itself. But, you know, that's your choice if you choose if you chose to do that. But the way you started talking about her, you attacked her age, calling her a 40 year old woman. That, that was unnecessary. Every time someone gets into it with Nicki Minaj, they use a couple of things. They use her age. They use the fact that she doesn't have a Grammy or whatever as a dig towards her. But you're talking about a 40-year-old woman, and then you talked about a husband as an R. But you were asking for a feature from this 40-year-old woman that was married to this same man. You were begging in the DMs for a feature, okay? not only did you talk about this woman's husband, you did a record with Kodak Black. Didn't he go to jail for r and someone? And then we come to find out that your dad is 60 something years old and he got with your mother when your mother was a minor. So for you to bring this stuff up, it's just really crazy to me. And then this audio that you released on Nikki, what was that supposed to prove? Because what you said she said in the audio, she didn't say. You said that. You kept saying flourishing, and you were trying to bait her into that conversation about that, and it didn't work. She didn't, she didn't indulge in that conversation, and so you got angry about that. And let me just say this to people. Just think about yourself when you're on your job. How would you feel if you were in your job and your company or your boss comes to you and tell you, well, we're going to have to let you go, but we're going to, you know, need you to train the person that we're going to replace you with. Who's going to do that? I'm not going to um, train a person that's going to replace me. Also, this is a competition. We know what this industry is. So everybody wants a feature from this woman and they act like they love her until they don't get the feature and then they hate her. I'm not trying to help somebody replace me. I don't owe a feature to anyone. If Nicki Minaj wants to give a person a feature, that's that's her call. If she doesn't want to give you a feature, that's her call as well. Why should you be getting mad because this woman won't give you a feature? She worked hard for everything that she has. These new girls, they want to come in this industry and they just want to get it just like the snap of their finger. They're all looking to get a feature from her to make them relevant. As to Nikki being jealous, what does she have to be jealous of? First of all, Nicki Minaj is at the top of her game and you're trying to reach where she's already at. She already has number ones. She's already made her millions. You don't have millions. So why would she be jealous of you? You talk about she's 40 years old. You look like you're the same age as her. Why would she be jealous of you? That just makes no sense. If anyone sounds like they're jealous, it sounds like these ladies are jealous. They're jealous because they don't have the number ones. Th their album is not selling. I mean, if I went down the list of all the reasons why Lotto had to be jealous of Nicki Minaj, the list would be long. Y'all, we have to use our intellect. Why would Nicki Minaj be jealous of Lotto? It sounds like Lotto was upset that she didn't get that feature from Nicki Minaj. And once she didn't get that feature, what she did was she set out to, I'm going to get her on this phone and I'm going to try to get me some dirt where I can use her. Because at the end of the day, all of these girls have one mission, is to end Nicki Minaj. That is the goal. However means it may take, they are trying to end her because in their eyes, they look at it like this. I can't be on top unless we end her. And that is the goal. And that's why all of these record labels are trying to recreate her. And it's not working. Lotto literally just released an album and she doesn't have one number one on the album. Not one. 
Big energy is from two years ago. That's the only thing she's living off of. She's living off of a song from two years ago, has a new album, and not one hit on that album. Why would Nikki be jealous of her? Also, you guys, Cardi B does a hell of a lot worse things than what Nikki could ever do. And she gets a pass. This woman literally hires goons to beat up on women, but it's okay. Y'all's like, oh, she good. We love her. She argues on the internet with young kids all the time and rappers, but it's okay because it's Cardi. She can do it. But everything Nicki Minaj does, y'all criticize her for. Everything she does. And Y'all need to be honest about that. It didn't. Ma it doesn't matter what this woman will do. It's always going to be somebody trying to criticize in her because the goal is to end her. And they've gotten everybody on this little hate train that they're trying to start back up again to end her because that's what they're doing. I just wish Nikki wouldn't give them fuel because she was 100% right in everything that she said about the Grammys. And she didn't attack Lotto until Lotto responded. She did issue um, a, a statement of her response to the Grammys. She has called out who at the Grammys are um, trying to keep her from getting a Grammy. She's, she's done all of that. She mentioned big energy. She mentioned the song. She didn't say Lotto name. She said the song, but a hit dog will holler. And that's what Lotto did. She hollered. Lotto even acknowledged that the songs are the same. They're both done by Dr. Luke. These are both Dr. Luke songs. They're both pop rap songs. Neither one of them should be in pop. They should both be in rap because they are a rap song. At the end of the day, every verse on Nicki Minaj's Super Freaky Girl is a rap. There's no singing of her singing at all. It is rap. They just do not want to give this woman a Grammy. And they should just really just issue her a letter saying, we're not going to give you a Grammy. Because they, if they did that, then she would know not to even submit her music. If they just would put it out to the public, we're never going to give her a Grammy. Lotto did this to herself. And the audio made Lotto look bad because Nikki didn't say any of the things that Lotto said. Lotto tried to bait her. And she just looks like an opportunist. That's what she looks like. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Wally, so much. Thank you so very much. But I definitely uh, disagree. I feel like, you know, Nikki Minaj should definitely be addressing, you know, the Grammy board by name and naming the committee. I feel like it's very low budget, trashy, food stamp worthy of <laughs> Nicki Minaj to address Lotto. Lotto is not the problem. The problem is the system. The system is the CEO of Grammys. The system is the, the people that's on the uh, on the committee of the Grammys. They need to be exposed. They need to be uh, blasted on social media, not her going back and forth with Lotto. If she the queen, which that is debatable, debatable because Cardi B got more uh, just broke a record with plat uh, with more platinum records with her song. I like it like that. Uh, just broke uh, Nicki Minaj's record on that. She need to focus on her career and not be worried about other female rappers because what it looks like to me and to other women out there, it looks like she's a little bit, you know, upset that it's more women in this circle, that she's not the only one. And she's sad and so depressed that every female, uh, mostly every female out here got got a Grammy and she don't have one. But what I'm saying is, in order for her to get a Grammy, she got to play game. Nicki Minaj was was not playing game at one point. She was not that likable in the industry. And we will see how this is going to play out. Of course, they're going to announce the nominations of the Grammys in November. So we will see. I just feel like if Nicki Minaj feel like it's mistreatment, like she quoted in her tweet, what if you had a job and you feel like you're being sabotaged? You need to call out the Grammy board. Call and out she's board. done that. And she's I said she, needs, she needs to call me my name. She needs to post their picture. She have not done that. Yes, she, have she has. Not, she, she, she have not done. Yes, she, she has. Have, she have not done a press tour. She have not done a no, press. No, she hasn't done a press she tour. Have, she, have, she have not went on CNN. That's what I'm talking about. She have power and she should do that. And she yeah, I, I don't think she personally she needs to do that. I disagree she on should. that. She should. Absolutely. What Monique did was most people need to take no, so what Monique did, she was discriminated at the Grammy. I mean, at the um, the Netflix, she called for a boycott. She sued the Netflix 
uh, for discrimination and racial bias. And she got a settlement from. Yeah, uh, but th that's different. That's different. She, got a she didn't work but for the what, Grammys. What, what Nikki, what, again. Nikki doesn't work what, for the Grammys. Again, she doesn't. And Monique did not work for the and, Grammys. And, and that's something. Treated. Yeah, but that was a she job she was trying to get oh, while. Oh, yeah, but Those again, two different things. says she have a job in the system. It's the same thing. And she it's not. She being mistreated, she should bring the Grammy to the court and say, this is mistreatment here. She need to be rallying behind the lawmakers and say, maybe you need to be a law again, on she what, doesn't what work for the Grammy. That's again, not a job. What, what, what I'm saying is she's an artist and she, and she said to our audience that this is her job. So if you're saying that this is your job, that is the way that she should handle this by going to the media, by doing a press conference, by doing you, the you show, and doing all here. Said. No, I'm not misunderstanding with it. I just disagree with what she said. It's a bunch and, of and that's fine if you disagree. Like, but I don't think you understood. That's like, that's like I, I understood exactly what she was saying. Just like when Lil Kim said many years ago, and many people called her old and bitter. They said that you know, Lil Kim said that Nikki wanted to be the only one, and many people, oh, you're just jealous. And now we're yet dealing with Lotto. It this have happened with Cardi. This has happened. Wait with a Lotto. minute. Let this me ask you something though. Coil array. This I've had with so many other female rappers. Let Nikki and I do not want to share the space with other women. And it's Wally, pathetic of Wally. Let me Guess ask what? You a question. Gonna, hold on one second. Let me finish this. It's going to be more women that's going to occupy this space. You're not going to be the only one. One year, one more, you're going to be 40. In the next 10 years, you're going to be 50. Honey, sit down. Raise your baby and get off that cocaine because what I think it is, I think it's a drug addiction is the reason why she's going on these manic rants. Wow. wow, wow, Riley. Now she's on drugs. Wow, that, that that's a bit much. Let me ask you this question though. As an artist, this is a competitive sport. What artist do you know wants to share the stage? None of them do. None what of them want to. Do they echo that? What Nicki Minaj have done? Have attack, attack, attack. I've never seen Beyonce. Who has she been attacking? I've never, I've never seen Beyonce. She oh, called, right. she called Megan Thee Stallion drop a tear because she was mad that Megan Thee Stallion was crying. She called Megan Thee Stallion Bigfoot. She said all this stuff, and then she does a lot of subtweeting because she don't understand. She's upset that it's other women out Everybody here. Everybody is occupying, different. It's occupying this space. Everyone Nikki, is different. Nicki Minaj is old and bitter, and she needs to get ready for her retirement, and maybe she needs to focus on her radio show because that is just trash how you leave a good production with cameras and mic systems and you go and downgrade it and do the show on your phone so this is what we're saying here Nicki Minaj could be doing other things other than arguing well well this is what I'll this is the last thing I want to say 10 years younger than you you're arguing with a young woman like I'm okay. just not understanding that this is the last thing I want to say if you guys this is for all these rap girls out there if you guys if you girls are that girl you're that B. You're that rapper. You're the best at what you do. You feel like Nikki is trash. She's nothing. She's jealous of you. Then move her. Get out there. Put your music out and dominate and move her. The problem is these girls cannot outdo her. That's the problem. That's why all this jealousy and this bickering is coming up because they cannot remove the queen. They need the queen to go by herself and just go sit down because they can't make her leave this industry because she's still dominating. This woman left the industry for what, a couple of years and came back and still is on top. And they're mad because they need this feature to help them get to where she is but when she came in the industry she wasn't begging for features but they're begging for features she's all these things that you say they are but these same chicks you talking about are out here begging her for features she's not begging them they're begging her anyway take some more calls i want to hear what other people have to say bye all right, thank you so very much. And what I'm saying is a lot of them not begging. I feel like Nicki Minaj is bitter and she needs to get it together. That's what I'm saying. And Cardi B have dethroned her as the queen. All right, uh, we got um, Tommy. Tommy, can you unmute your mic? You're live. So Cardi is the queen, but yes, she can't sell out a simple venue. She can't sell out festivals. Her singles be flopping left and right, but she's the queen. 
Nikki is the queen on pure sales, on streaming, on concerts. She sold out two. She sold out two world tours, but yet somehow Cardi is the queen. That's my problem, y'all. You guys only like your your faves when they because y'all hate Nikki, and it shows because y'all don't buy your faves music. They be flopping left and right. Megan The Stallion's album flopped, and she's broke right now, and that's why she got her house robbed. Because she couldn't afford security. So let's not play games. Y'all are so messy. Y'all saying that Nikki should, should just be obligate, obligated to do all these features for these girls when they don't deserve it. What does Nikki have to be jealous of Lotto of? When has this girl written a hit? When have we heard a hit from this girl? Big Energy? A song from two years ago? And let me say this. The Grammys, the gra the the special community is full of the the J community. I don't want to say I don't want to get you in trouble, so we'll just leave it at that. But we all know what happens when Nick Cannon mentioned the J community, and look what happened. He got his own show taken away from him. So let's not act like there's they don't have all. Like, they don't have any power in this Hollywood, in this music industry. They have power everywhere. And I, and you want Nikki to go and face them alone? For me personally, I want to say this. Nikki have all this clout. She should be using her energy to address the Grammy committee and do a press tour. She have not done that. Um, and when she's getting angry at Lotto, making it seem like Lotto was the one that why her record got bumped in pop. And when I listen to Freaky Girl, it does sound like a pop record. Okay, and so does Lotto's, but hers is in the rap category. Again, whose fault is that? Is it Lotto's fault or the Grammy committee fault? Is it Lotto's fault or the Grammy? It is the Grammys, but why? But, who, who, who but is that? so mention. Hold on, hold on. Let me say this. So mentioning Lotto's big energy song as an example is blaming Lotto because she just she mentioned Drake's song too. So how is she blaming her? All right, we will we will definitely see how this operate. I want to read what one of my moderators wrote on here and said, I don't care what anyone said. This was Kim 10 years ago when Nikki came out. Times have changed. Now it's Nikki turn. Nikki needs to let go, move on, and do other things. I agree with that because Nikki did not handle the situation when Kim right, and now she's going through the same situation. But Kim, but Kim isn't popping out here. Her album only sold 5,000 copies in its whole lifetime. So what, there's no comparison here because Nikki just got a number one. So what? where's the comparison? One's flopping and the other one isn't. And, and Nikki Minaj, if you have all that, like you claim that she have, Nikki Minaj shouldn't be worried about Lotto. So mentioning Lotto's song is worrying about her? Absolutely. How so? Because this wasn't about Lotto. This was about the Grammys. Why haven't Nikki post pictures of the Grammy board and went on the Wiley show to talk about it? But Wiley, you're acting as if this Grammy board, this whole committee has taken people down. You're, but you're acting as if one man, Ken Ehrlich, has taken down Nikki. One man, and he's not even part of that committee. He blackball Nikki from radio and he was only a producer so why would Nikki go after a whole committee because she should she the queen right and she's powerful right do it okay but anyway let me get on uh Sean David Way and Storm listen I believe that Storm I think this whole interview backfired on him I think that the reason I think that he aids um, Kiki to go on these other um, uh, on all these other platforms to juice up the interview with Storm because it makes sense to me on why she wasn't revealing uh, like key details and not giving enough specifics and not and refusing to label anything because she because Storm said that there was additional information in that bit in his um, interview right. 
So I think that it was just all a plot and it backfired on him. And when he and I think he's afraid of that lawsuit. I think that he should release the interview because a lot of people still want to see it. And I know uh, he was very upset uh, about the response because he would have accumulated, I think, a rumor. Uh, someone said he would have made $10,000 um, off the interview with Kiki. And he was upset that especially Sean Davey Way, you know, did the interview and got a lot of views. And a lot of people were requesting uh, refunds and he decided to refund them their money. So we're definitely going to see how this is definitely going uh, to continue to play out. But, you know, it, it's something in Sean David Way is almost at 90,000 uh, subscribers. So when he came out, Storm felt like, you know, if I put this out, that will give Sean David Way and Wiley and them some clout. That's what I think in his mind happened. I know he said it didn't happen that way, but that's what I thought it happened. And then a lot of the members was like, hey, well, we might as well get a refund because what she shared on the Wiley show is ain't no tea. It ain't really good. So I just see the okay, let me go on in front of money because if he would have, you know, released this on social media, it would have gotten, you know, widely more views. I would have accumulated up to 30,000 views. You know, Sean David Wade would have accumulated up to more views and more subscribers because people would have been hungry to go to these other channels, but he didn't do that. And so, um, yeah. Right. Do you think the lawsuit is going to go through? No law, so I haven't. I haven't received any paperwork for any lawsuit. Okay, okay, I'm with you. If it, I mean, make your money. If you get the law, if you get a lawsuit, you better be making a bunch of clip baby videos and getting your coins, Wiley. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. All right, thank you. Support. Thank you. All right. Thank y'all so very much. Um. So thank y'all for the sword. Do you feel that Nikki husband has affected her music sales? Um, I believe that it kind of tarnished, not musically, I feel like it tarnished, you know, Nicki Minaj standing in the industry because now people can use that as a re and plus her brother and plus that. So we are definitely happy we're going on. We got another caller here. All uh, right. Hi, Mouth Open. How you doing? Mouth Open? You there? Hello? Hey, Wally. Yes. Hi. How are you? Doing good. I can't hear you. I don't okay. know what oh. I'm supposed to do to turn the volume up. Just say hello. Talk. Say, do your comment. Say your comment. Huh? Just go ahead with your comment. What are you going to do? Just t tell me what you're going to say. Go ahead. Okay. I'm just going to try to hear you because I can't hear you. Okay. Go so, ahead. um, I think. People just need to go with the flow. Times have changed. Times have changed. Uh, first it was Kim. Then came Nikki. There was nobody after Nikki. And Nikki had her run. Nikki was there. Now the industry is pushing out all these new girls. They come out. They go get their body done, get their teeth done. They have a few hits. Look, even Cardi, I don't think Cardi is going to have another album or go on tour or, or whatever because Cardi came out, she was hot. And then, I mean, she's doing whatever she's doing now. Like, Nikki, it, this is a different generation. Times are different. These industry people, and when I say industry people, I'm talking about the higher ups who is running this music industry they don't care about any of these artists they care about making their money right and everything is moving fast now it's not like back in the day when you didn't have the internet and you didn't have all these different streaming services and all this stuff people are hot they, they somebody come out they hot they're the new wave everybody's going crazy about them and then it die down and they move on to the next so i don't I don't quite understand why people is like, it's like deja vu. 
listening to people go on about Nikki and this and that and the people who hate you know Nikki the people who love Nikki it was the same situation with Kim like Kim was wanting her respect from Nikki they was calling Kim washed up blah 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 or oh, you all sit down all this stuff and here comes it's Nikki turn now times have changed people just need to get with the time soon it's gonna be whoever is hot now whoever the girls that that is hot now soon it's gonna pass and it's gonna be somebody else again and it, it's nikki had a good run because now with these times it's not gonna be the same like no girl no rap girl that come out right now is gonna have the same run that nikki had because everything is moving fast everything is quick so people just need to get with it. Nikki should, like you said, focus on her radio show, do her thing. She she have like a a, a Fendi. She she does she's doing something with Fendi. Do those things. Like look at that's why I will forever love Rihanna. Look 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 what Rihanna did with her career. Rihanna did not just stick to music. And if Nick, Nikki have all these supporters and all these people that love her, then do other stuff you have your bobby your bobby thing she should have oh, i don't even know but she should have like wigs she should be doing the clothes like there is so much other things for her to do than fight with these little girls over some position and she's not going after the grammys because she's not going after the jays when i say jays you know who i'm talking about those people who if you talk about them they come after you and they destroy you so she can't really go after them. So just do your own thing. Look at look look what Rihanna did with her career. This is Nikki turn to do do her own thing and leave them little girls because they're not gonna go anywhere far. They're not gonna have the run that you had. You was on top for ten years. These girls are not gonna have no no longevity for ten years. They song come out, it's hot. It goes number one and then it fall off. Or it goes to wherever and it fall off and we don't hear... Like, I don't even know these songs. None of them. Most of the music I listen to is old music. Because you could enjoy that. You, you listen to it. They, they, they're memorable. Like these girls with these little choruses that they hurt for a minute and then it's over. So why is she fighting with these little girls? All right. Thank you so very much for calling in. There you go. I can't hear anything you're saying. All right. Stay. I don't know what's wrong with my phone, but okay, I hope you. you heard me. All right. Thank and you. I just, that's all I had to say. Love all you. All right. Bye bye. Okay. Um, let's bring, uh, we got somebody on here. Give me a second. All right. Uh, talking, you there? Yes. I just called back to say this that lady that just got off the phone, she was right. She really was right. That's what I do. I listen to old music because this new stuff is trash anyway. And she's right also. It was another person that mentioned about the Jays. The people that run the music industry, they are the Jays. So this whole concept, Wiley, that you're talking about going on CNN and all that, no, dude, you can't do that. Not when you're dealing with these people. You, you, you just can't do that. You, you have to just leave it alone because these people well, don't, run. Don't, well, if you say leave it alone, don't complain about it. Why complain? Well, well, you know what? You know what? She's doing, I, what I think she's doing is, I, I'm sure in your life you've had something that was so frustrating to you that you knew you couldn't change, you know? And so you do what you can do. You speak in the, um, arena or area or to people who you can speak to because you know you can't really do anything about it that happens to people every day at jobs so you have to think because i know myself i've been in a job like that before where um i knew if i said something it wasn't going to make things better it was going to make things worse so I just left it alone. And what I did was I just waited till I got myself in a position where I could just leave that place and go somewhere else. All and right. so that's what I that's what I did. But we have to look at it like this. This is 
her craft. This is her career. She's been doing this for years. She loves her music. She just doesn't want to walk away from music like that. And I think it's unfair for people to tell her to just to walk away. Who does that? Tell people to, oh, just walk away from your job. And it's something that you love doing. That's not right. But I do agree with the lady that I think she just needs to um, accept the fact that um, this new industry, it is what it is. It's about money at the end of the day. And we have to recognize also that Nicki Minaj is not in one of those 360 deals that they're not they're not going to make money off of her. So she's not a priority for them anyway, because okay. they can't make money off of her like they can make off of a lotto and these other girls. And to the one person I saw somebody in the chat say that um, Nikki shouldn't have mentioned Lotto's name. Why can't um, Nikki mention Lotto's name or mention that song? Lotto has been doing interviews where she's been mentioning Nicki Minaj's name. So why is it OK for um, Lotto to bring up Nikki's name? But Nikki can't bring up her name or whatever. And then you can't tell me when, okay, when from now on, don't bring up my name and I don't bring your name after you've been using my name. No, you just not going to tell me um, that okay. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to stop. Okay. It don't work like that. Well, thank you so very much for calling back in. I'm going to go to the last caller here. Uh, because thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so very much. We do want to make this video at least two hours. Okay, um, here you go. You're live. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so where you want to go with the situation so I can explain it to your audience? Go ahead, explain it. Okay. So did you touch on anything with the Sean David Way and Storm and Rose situation? We did. You can talk about that. Okay. The real reason that Sean David Way do not like Storm and Roll and really why he dragged them and among other things. It started with um back when um what's going name? Sunday TV had her bikini bottom panel and how the panel was formed was on um, when Amon Wiggins made the OG monkey comment with um and how that controversy came about. That's how the panel got together and so when the panel got together it was um sean david way five fly you know what I'm saying danny biker chick juicy b views and sunny tv they used to come together often to like their goal was to get a mom wicked to respond to them and have a conversation with them about the og monkey comment so in the midst of that storm um Everybody used to appear on the show, Nick and I, every, you know, all the other content curators. And at one point, Storm and Roller appeared on, you know, saying uh, the bikini bottle of Pamela and uh, with Nick and I on the same live one day. And so and I got to touch on something else to come back to this and everything could make sense when I wrap this all up. So when Nick and I one day said, the reason why Tasha K was mad were her because she was hanging out with daytime tea time and that caused her the controversy if that was the case if you go back nine months prior to the controversy with nika knight tasha k she was hanging out with lovely t at the bt red carpet so that could be the case where tasha k all of a sudden tried to use storm to get with nika knight so they could have a plot against nika knight that wasn't true because we got to come back to the bikini bottom panel was Nikki Knight and Storm Moreau was on the bikini bottom panel. And that when Storm Moreau first mentioned to Nikki Knight that he had a crush on her. And that was around November of the time when they had the, uh, the bikini bottom panel. Well, anyway, they had the bikini bottom panel until Sean David, to Sean David Way, Sun TV, Five Five, Juicy Reviews, and uh, David Biker Chief finally got Amal Wiggins to come on there live. Why they was live. So when uh, Mom Wiggins come on there live while they was live, uh, Mom Wiggins say hello to all the panels except for Firefly. He like kind of distant and said, hey, the, the, the lady in the yellow, I don't like you. So they had a little argument and then uh, Mom Wiggins had just left and got off, you know what I'm saying, got off the live. And so when he got off the live for a second, Firefly was like arguing with 
you know, Sun TV and Sean David Way saying, hey, y'all turned into fanboys when he came on the live. But when he, you know, saying before he came on live, y'all was, you know, say criticizing him. So they had an argument for a second. Then when Amari came back on the live, you know, saying, you know, Sun TV tried to, like, get him to apologize to Fafa for, like, dissing her, and he refused. And you know one thing about my way, if you try to corner him and get back him into a corner, he he going to be more defensive and more prideful than you know if you was to just approach him with a a more delicate and grace when you come to whatever issue you have for him. So anyway, so he came back online, he went and apologized, said that he left the live again, then Five Five and Sean Day Way and Saint Tibu were arguing because you know, she felt like Fafa in her situation felt like they turned their back on her and allowed, you know, Ma Wiggins to disrespect her and, you know, said nobody stood up for her. So, Sun TV freaked out. The lie got cut prematurely. She reached out to Joby Beauty the next day behind the scenes to ask her, hey, can you get me on the, you know, get me on your live and we could explain the situation because I'm going through a controversy right now. So Joby View agreed. Joby Beauty agreed because in Sun TV Maya at the time she felt like Joby Beauty was unbiased. And so when she had her life and had, you know, at this point they kicked, you know, saying five five out of the um the bikini bottle panel. It was at this point it was Sunny TV, Sean David Way, Five Five oh uh, not no, Joe uh Juicy B Views, Daddy Bike Chip. And Five Five was in the chat, arguing with them while they was on live. Where Sun TV was doing most of the talking, explaining why she felt the way she felt, and why you know everything felt the way they did. And um, and in the midst of this, they you know say, of course they argued back and forth between each other in the chat. You know, Sean David Way would say something here and there, and like I said, but he wasn't Sean David Way yet. He he didn't even start his platform yet. And so, but the juicy reviews and um, that the biker chick didn't say anything. And so, anyway, they had that live. People was causing controversy with with uh, Sunny TV. Basically, were blaming her and feeling like she was unprofessional. Blah blah blah. The way she handling herself. And so, after you know, say Jovi Beauty had her live, and they all went on and they all had their say on the situation it was more controversial with sunny tv you know saying how you know she was being portrayed by people the way she was handling herself and how she was moderating the panel and everything in the midst of that this was storm Row come back in in the situation is she felt like storm Row didn't defend her and so in the midst of all of this so now she mad storm Row, and in a, in a way she was mad at tasha k and so, in the midst of this, she dropped uh, Juicy Reviews and Daddy Baki Chip from the panel as well because she felt like, hey, why well, I had this controversy with, why well, I was trying to explain myself on Jovi Beauty, y'all didn't say anything, y'all didn't speak up. So, now, when they go live again, this is around January of 2020, they have this new panel called the You Can't Sit With Us panel, where it's Sean David Way, Tiff West, Sun TV. Now they got the, the it's a new pedal car. You can't sit with us. And so on their first live, Sunny TV, basically at the beginning of the live was like, Storm and Road didn't defend me. Storm and Road didn't have my back. I ain't here for Tasha K. She ain't defend me, blah, blah, blah. Then she turned and turned the live on Tasha K and said, well, why did Tasha K took my, I guess, Storm dating show idea? And so I guess there's all uh, Sun TV kind of mentioned she was gonna have a dating show idea for Storm Maru after he reached fifty K. And then for what reason, like right like maybe a day or two before she went um uh, the sit with panel went live, Tasha K had mentioned about the dating show idea, but she said she didn't know that Sun TV had the same idea. So anyway, Tasha K was in the chat. Tasha K asked, hey, can I come on the live to explain myself? I didn't know that you had the same idea as me. 
at this time, Sun TV was shaking up about, about you know, saying, well, Ma Wiggins came online. She felt like he dominated the platform, and that's why everything went awry. So, so she was like, no, you can't come on live. You know, you know, shot that way. Like, well, let her come on live. Let her explain stuff. Cause at this at this time, he was pro Tasha K. He was like a wino at this point. And you know, she was like, no, no, I don't want to come on live. Blah blah. So, of course, Tasha K was like, well, if you don't want me to come on live, I will send the the text message exchange between me and Star Moreau to your, I guess, Instagram uh, inbox. So Tasha K did that. Left the chat. Uh, Sunny TVC, the um, text message in the uh, inbox, and she read it on live in front of everybody. And Tasha K basically was saying, Hey, Storm, why she said I took an idea? I didn't know anything about the idea. And so Storm was like, I don't know why she said that, but she she is messy. And that's when Tasha K was like, Yeah, she is messy because she is, she was a person. This is Sunny TV, they talking about it this time. Sunny TV. Two years prior before she rebranded herself and you know she rebranded herself quite a bit before this situation and after the situation she kept rebranding herself she had a beef with a girl on youtube i forgot her name but it was a beef was like two years prior and they, it, it got ugly and so tasha k mentioned that situation she knew about it and so of course Shen tv read about this read this text message out loud so now she's offended and so now she's offended so now she's like Tasha, how can you call me messing when you got cases going on? And she'll talk about the Cardi B case that meant because Cardi B had sued Tasha K and the 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 Tasha K got served like I want to say March of that year of 2019. And so this now is January 2020 at this point. So she's like, Tasha K, you got cases, and she's like, Storm and Row, how you gonna say I'm messing when you you might be gay? I think you're gay. And so like when she when she said that, Sean David Wade didn't. He didn't say anything, but he smiled. But it was a smile like, you know what I'm saying, like a smile like a ha-ha, it's funny smile, or a cynical smile, or even like a a romantic smile. It was more of an uncomfortable smile. Because him and Storm Moreau at this point, behind the scenes and stuff, was cool. They used to have a conversation. And he was just starting his platform at the time, so Storm Moreau used to come over there and show love and stuff like that. And at that point, Tiff West didn't say anything either because at this point she was Storm Moreau's moderator. And so anyway, that situation came about. So, you know, Sun TV at this point, she's mad. Now she criticized Tasha and she criticized Storm. So I guess Storm got wind of what was said on the live or what was not. And so the next day he blocked Sean David Way on Sunny TV and Tiff West because of, you know, what was said by his sexuality or whatever not. So when people say, well, I heard in the past where people say, well, Thomas sexuality didn't get questioned until Amal Wiggins criticized him and addressed him. No, his sexuality was getting questioned like ever since probably mid to late 2019. It just wasn't as loud until Amal Wiggins did it. So anyway, so after that, you know, so they went live the next night or the night after when Storm Moreau blocked on them. And so they spoke about the situation, about why they got blocked. And I remember Sean Day Webb was like, I feel that hurt that, you know, this man blocked me. I thought, well, cool. I thought, you know, saying we had, a, you know, a relationship, you know, saying I thought we were cool. And he's lying too. He he could he could say all day that he that wasn't the case, but that was true. And so then Sean David was like, I didn't never say he was gay. The man said he's straight, so I wouldn't I wouldn't never say he's gay if otherwise. I mean, I'm gonna take him at his word. That was his exact words when he said that. And so Tiff West ain't say much of nothing about the situation. She was like, Well, I don't know why he blocked me, but you know, I was his moderator and I felt offended, offended. Blah, 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 blah. So at this point, after that, that's when Sean David Way started really working on his channel, doing his stuff solo, and then he started criticizing Storm Moreau. And he did that for a couple of months, and then in the midst of that, I believe he started criticizing Storm Moreau after he was blocked. And, you know, I believe. 
I can't prove it, but I believe behind the scenes Armand Wick was also in his ear telling him to criticize Storm Moreau at this time. And so then she was on, um, and then she, then he went to, I want to say San Diego to visit Sunday TV. And then Sunday TV, they hung out, you know, that when she just had a baby at the time. In the midst of that, he was, you know, going live from his um, YouTube channel with Sunday TV. And I guess he left the, um, the live open. So he was just about to get a thousand subscribers. So she started deleting videos to get those subscribers down, or get those subscribers down, to get those videos down, not to get, to get, take those videos off and to get the subscriber count down so he can't get the thousand K for what reason she didn't want him to get a thousand K for all, uh, for, you know, monetization. That's when her and Sean David Way fell out. And so that pretty much was the end of that. And then after, as, like I said, again, he was, Sean David Way was still starting his challenge. Now he turned on her and started criticizing her. And he criticized, you know, Storm Moreau, blah, blah, blah. And then in the midst of that, he started criticizing Tasha K. But again, it goes back to, I think, Sean David Way had, uh, some, Amar Wiggle was whispering in Sean David Way's ears, like, hey, you need to criticize Tasha K too. That's how you could grow your channel, because there was enough Tasha K detractors to make him, to help his channel grow. So that's when he started criticizing Tasha K quite a bit. And that was the evolution of Sean David Way. All right. Thank you so very much for giving us that exclusive there about why Sean and them fell away. Um, I want to definitely say um, perfectly when, um, and I say this humbly, you know, when YouTubers fall out, it doesn't end great. It always end one YouTuber going on YouTube and talking about the situation and dragging a situation. That's how that goes. Uh, but you, Brother Duval, been there from the uh, beginning, and you gave your statement. Of course, um, Sean David Way, uh, we reached out to Sean David Way for a statement. Um, he have not responded. And of course, Storm responded, and he said that's not the reason why he blocked Sean David Way. What did you respond to that? I mean, he can say what he want to say, but like I said, I was there. And like I said, I, if I could recollect all these dates and and situations why I have the reason to lie. But like I said, again, that's his truth. If he wants to stick to that, that's fine. But like I said, I was there when it happened. Like I said, I used to watch them all. And so I knew when they went live about the situation, and that's how they felt about it. So even around that time, if Storm would want to be honest, he had also blocked on, uh, what's the what's the woman name? Uh, Mod Radio. Because that's when the beginning of Mod Radio and Tasha K beef. And he didn't want to get in the middle of that. And there's... My radio tried to get him in the middle of that situation, and so he blocked her as well around the same time. So, like I said, again, that's his truth. I'm not going to argue with him because, you know what I'm saying, that's how he feels. He have a different version, but like I said, I was there. And like I said, I kept up with everything, and that's why I got to speak about it from a perspective and put all the information with the uh, situation. But like I said, again, I'm not going to argue with a grown man. That's if he feel like he have his truth, then he can come up here and tell the truth. But I, that's the version why I feel like how they why they fell out. All right. Well, they, a lot of people are saying Duvall is definitely doing a great job. Duvall is definitely giving a T. Um, a lot of viewers are saying that you are an amazing guest. Um, Storm responded with this comment, said Mob Radio was a totally different situation. If you get Mob Radio on the, um, on the platform one day, she'll tell you the same thing. That in her version, she feel like that's the reason why they fell out, because he blocked her on situ on, on Instagram as well. Like I said, he didn't want to get into the controversy between Ma Radio and Tasha K at the time, and so he blocked her as well. And she felt the way, and they haven't been dealing with each other since. Again, I'm not gonna argue with this grown man. You know, what I'm saying if he feels differently, that's on him. But like I said, I don't have no reason to. Skip fast. I broke it down the situation the best way that I recollect on the situation. You could either believe me or you don't, but at the same time, I just told my truth. <laughs> um, a lot of comment is definitely <laughs> in the chat. One comment said Duvall definitely have a great radio voice. So, have you ever done radio before, Duvall? I work in radio. 
And okay. so, like I said, again, like I told you before, I graduated with a master's degree and my job is in radio currently. Okay. So they're definitely uh, saying that you are an amazing talent. We're seeing that in the comments. So we greatly appreciate it that you was giving us the tea on tell, the fallout of Storm Monroe and Sean David Way. Tell your audience, thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak. And I, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak. Like I said, this is my truth. He got his truth. So at the end of the day, your audience can choose who they want to believe in this situation. All right. Thank you so very much for calling in. Have a good night. Thank you so very much. So we definitely have Brother Duval, uh, a great talent uh, for coming on. So we greatly appreciate it. Sally from California said, quote, Duval is an amazing talent. He should come on the Wiley show more. We got Billy from Alabama. Duval kept it real. All right. Uh, we are definitely uh, going to go to Talking Faces. You're back. I, I believe I believe what Duval said and what he said made sense to me or whatever. It sounds like it's maybe what six or seven sides to this story, but um sounds like Duval is a person that was kind of like on the outside looking in or whatever. And um I believe his version <laughs> of the story. I really do. And just the other thing that I wanted to say, um, Wiley. Um, I think the problem in the music industry is the Jays. The Jays are the real bullies here. That's who the real bullies are. And when you were saying that Nikki should go to CNN and all that, she can't do that, um, Wiley, because the Jays run all that. All right. Well, we already had that discussion. We were talking about more so Sean and Storm. Thank you. For I know. I just wanted to throw that last piece in. Oh, okay. But thanks Thank anyway. You. Thank you so very much. Uh, we greatly disagree with what she's saying. Um, Nikki can do a tour right now and do that. We will definitely talk about it. Um, but thank you all so very much for the support. Um, shout out to Tr Salandra from North Carolina saying Duval definitely should come back on the show. Thank you, Salandra from North Carolina. So thank you all so very much. Uh, this was a great show. <laughs> thank you all so a great, 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 great show for y'all support. Um, and we would love, we definitely think that Nicki Minaj should definitely do a massive press tour. And that's what we want to say. This was a good show. We talked about a lot today. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, we will do an after show on Station Head for about. We definitely gonna do an after show on Station Head. Let me get the Station Head together. Okay. Um, Storm came in a chat, so we want to greatly uh, appreciate him for coming in a chat. Uh, we're gonna do an after show on Station Head. Okay, give me a second. Who is that backstage? Okay, all right. Um, go, Joy and Payne, you're live. I believe everything that uh, Lil Duval said. And like he said before he got off the phone, I ain't going back and forth with him. So, and the thing is, is that it seems like Storm be dropping out of the freaking clouds as it like, you know, how normal people, they just, what's up everybody? I mean, he drops right on cue. It's some, I believe Lil Duval. I believe him. Cause Storm, Storm's movements are weird. And that's all, I mean, you you know, people say no shade, that's kind of, that's, that's shade. Storm creeping me out, shit. That's it, Wiley. Why Why are you saying that? Did Storm uh, reject you for a date? Are you there? Did Storm reject you or block you? I want to know. Okay, we're going to do an after show over there on stage here. Make sure y'all come on in the room over there on stage here. We definitely are going to do an after show. I wanted to hear why she have so much built up um uh, anger towards storm storm did she did you block her or something did, did she did she want to give you some of her yoni and you said no 
uh, we would like to know. You realize that everybody that watches and listens is in the chat. I don't know if this is her. Joy, what? what? Did what? Wiley, where you go? Okay, I was saying that. <laughs> oh, here we go. You didn't have to put me on the big screen. I, I, I'm going to hit it and quit it, like joy and pain. <laughs> I was saying, like, did you and Storm have a reaction? No, I just, you know, I like Storm at first, but then so I what, got what, to. What, what happened? Because you said. I just uh, got to looking said, at him, and, and, and it's like. You like Storm. No, 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 no. I didn't say that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me put my AirPod in right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said I used to like storm okay but when this whole situation with the whole tasha and everything else popped off I, them movements wasn't right to me wiley it was some it was some oh it was some questionable movements that's all but but here's the thing i don't go over there so i don't have to like it just it's just weird him popping up just ugh. And I know people say you can be in the bushes, okay, but like, let a nigga know you watching. Do you think Storm Monroe is attractive? Because obviously, I don't like. I, I don't like. I mean, that's not. He's not my type. Exactly. I never even looked at him like that. I'm just talking about from a pure content creating standpoint. It's not um, the antics he's been pulling since the Tasha K shit. It's just been some questionable movements for me. And when, when I say what, questionable, what I'm talking about. Movements? Yeah, what is the question? Well, because it's a lot of passive aggressiveness. It's like, you know, Lil Duval gets on here and he's, you know, he's he's talking about text messages about, you know, he calling people messy and da 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 da. But every time Storm explains his story, it's a whole milder version. I know I'm right about it. Lil Duval is not going back and forth with nobody because he got the facts. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. But a lot I mean, of I'm serious. It's like, okay. A lot, of, like, a, lot, a lot of people are saying that you wanted to date Storm and. Oh, honey, honey. Storm to cry. <laughs> I, I, honey, it. it... No, I, I, no. Mm -mm. He can't even. I'm not even. I'm not gonna knock Storm. Storm says so. I'm wrong for saying for for Storm so saying messy in the chat for saying messy in the chat. No, you. It, it. It's like yeah, you are not wrong for the text message, but when somebody asked you, you don't use that same energy. That's all. Do you want to be a moderator on Storm Monroe's platform? I don't go on his platform. Okay. Unless so, I'm trying to get receipts or something. Like if I want to, if I want to look at the transcript, then I'll go on his platform. But I don't, I'm not a regular on his platform. No. I'm a producer. Okay. I'm not chasing nobody storm or nothing like that. And that's that's, you know, that's them. But I've been over here for about two years, about a year and a half. Okay, so these are this is just my opinion. That's all. If you say if you say somebody's messy in a text message, and then in the chat he said, "Well, that's not why we fell out," or "That's not whatever the hell." It's just always something different, you know. And I just, you know, it's just too many gray areas that's not black and white. And it's like, if you thought the bitch was uh, messy, then that's what you just should have said, you know, and kept it moving. But now it's, another, it's a whole nother reason why you don't mess with her, whoever this person is. But anyway, Wiley, no, I don't like Storm as far as attractive or whatever. I mean, he's... <clears throat> He's a nice looking guy. I, I'll say that. But I mean, it's, it's not. It, I mean, I haven't looked at Storm in that way. So it's just he's a content creator. And I was trying to decide on whether or not I was going to follow him. And I decided not to.
it is what it is. Okay, and Storm said I was talking to her at that point. So of course, uh, another uh, Storm also said, but I'm just not for you, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay, Storm. I mean, I'm just one person. I put I'm I'm just giving my opinion. That's it. That's it. Is what it is. Okay. Thank you so very much for calling Don't in. Don't troll me when I hang up now. All right. No, thank you. Thank you, thank you, for, thank you so very much for calling in. Joy. Come on, Wiley. And pain. Yes. Oh, whatever, Wiley. Shit. You know, I know your face. I know your face when you be a fake honey. You ain't you can't get it with me. I know you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> So what Monique says, Storm will say anything to get along with viewers and other commentators and viewers. Uh, there's a, uh, what did see what that super chat said? There's a phoniness behind that gummy Oh man, man. <laughs> what? Oh man. <laughs> Gummy bear smile. What in the world? Girl, about all of your comments are going to say whatever for views. Y'all better recognize that. That is Thor. He is definitely here, y'all. Um, giving his thoughts. Greatly appreciated uh, him coming in, in the middle of the night, giving his uh, uh, statement. So we greatly uh, appreciate that. You guys, we will be definitely doing the replay, uh, not the replay. We're definitely, uh, we'll be doing uh, the after show over there on stage yet. We will be restreaming me and Storm conversation that we had. So y'all could definitely uh, join in for that. Um, but uh, we greatly appreciate the new supporters. If you're a new subscriber, hello. If you are a returning subscriber, hello. I greatly appreciate you all for coming through. Um, this was fun. This was great. They stay saying they don't watch Storm, but she was just taking up. Yeah, joy and pain for me said that she don't watch store but then immediately following that statement she said quote i go over there to take notes so when you going over there to take notes um that means you watch store so if you're going over there to take notes, that means you watch his show. So she admit that she watches the show. And see, that's why it is. And so me personally, I watch all YouTubers. I I watch uh, Sean David Way. I take notes. I watch um, Scott. I take notes. I watch K Empire. Lovely T, Nick at Night, Tasha K, Nosy Rosie. Uh, I watch a lot of YouTubers. And I remember when I was coming up, I would watch your channel and take notes. I remember when Storm interviewed um, Jaguar Wright, and I literally took notes of the Jaguar Wright interview and uh, took notes of that. So that is definitely what I have been doing. So we greatly appreciate the people that are listening in the bushes because when I tell you, um, folks were doing reviews of me and Kiki Green interview, and um, and it went viral uh, with other YouTubers, and it was definitely clouding. So we greatly appreciate uh, that um, and support. Uh, greatly appreciate all of that. We also want to give a special shout out to um, Darius Cooks. We reached out to Darius. Um, and he's just an awesome person. We're trying to get Darius to in invite him on our show to do a cooking segment, to cook us some collard greens, to cook us some ribs, to cook us some uh, some sweet potato pie, 
So we reached out to him and I told Darius Cooks, you are not a crook. You are not a crook. You are an amazing cook. And so that is definitely what we said to our brother. And so hopefully we can get him on the show and cook us an amazing meal. So we are definitely are going to definitely do that because we definitely believe Darius is innocent and we feel it in our gut that he is innocent. So we are definitely are going to keep y'all updated on that. And we are definitely do that. All right. Um, greatly appreciate that for you all for coming through. Okay. Let me put this mic down. Hold on. All right. Now I ain't say that. Oh, Darius is going to get ro Rose in the chat. We love Darius and he's an amazing cook. He's not a crook. He's an amazing cook because my gut said that he's innocent. That's my gut. All right. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. We will see you all in the next episode. Thank you all so very much for coming through. And we will see you all in the next episode. Uh, follow us on Twitter. And you can also follow us on Twitter at Wiley Show. We is on TikTok, TikTok at Wiley Show. We got a story time we're going to drop on TikTok. So make sure y'all be on the lookout for that. Uh, also, too, if you want to send us check or money orders, make it out to the Marquise Wiley. But if you want to send stuff to our P.O. box, uh, you can send our check money order or gifts, uh, 3XL T-shirt that I wear, or uh, cases of water. Uh, you can do it at P.O. box 701122. Dallas, Texas, 75370. Again, that is P.O. Box 701122, Dallas, Texas, 75370. All right. Thank you all so very much. This was a good, hilarious live that we did. And also, our, if you want to be a blessing to us via Cash App, it's dollar sign Marquise Wally 28. We put it back into the show. Uh, we, we got an HD camera coming, so we're definitely having that as well. We're going to get some artwork. Uh, that's going to be on our background. So we're taking a green sheet down because usually I was going to use the um, the the background for and put like my logo as as the back. But we're definitely uh, going to uh, put some artwork in our back. All right. So we thank y'all so very much for you all support. Okay. Um, where else are we going? What's up? Okay. Okay. You want to be notified? Text Wiley to eight eight eight. 534-4939. It is actually free. And my birthday is right around the corner. Okay. Uh, thank you so very much. My birthday is right around the corner. I will be 32 years old. So if you want to be a financial blessing, we're asking for $32 uh, per subscriber, a uh, dollar per year. Um, that is what we are requesting from the subscribers. And we Thank you all so very much. Make sure you hit the like button. It is free. Thank you all so very much. And we will see y'all on the after show on YouTube. Peace.